So I'm like, I'm like, oh wow, they're cooking with cannabis? Oh man. So I could do this. And it's like, when I seen it, all it was was just one component added into my recipes. What's really good? I'm Akil, the real deal with zeal and mass appeal, and this is The Sesh, produced by the Canna Chef Union, and I'm chilling with Chef Marv. What's good with you, brother? What's going on, brother? How you doing today? I'm doing well. I'm feeling super fresh, super fresh blessed to be living in Vegas, to be at another sesh. The weather is great. It's a great view out there with the full moon. I'm curious. I know you recently came here to Vegas. What brought you all the way out to Vegas, and where did you come from? Uh, what brought me to Vegas was the atmosphere that you guys have out here and the weather. I was tired of New York <laughs> and I'm from New York. So I was literally like tired of New York. Isn't it pretty busy here too, like New York? Um, yes, it is. People say like, oh, Vegas is slow. I don't see that. I don't see that at all. Like Vegas is growing. I'm seeing the infrastructure growing. Like people are telling me like, oh, this is the new Vegas. And I'm like, well, it's starting to look like New York a little bit. So. If you guys are growing, I'm here to grow with you. What was it about New York that you got tired of? Oh, man, it was just so cluttered. We're cluttered in there. So it's like everybody's, like, everybody's doing the same thing, you know? Everybody's, you know, doing, like, chef work. Everybody's doing MUAs. Everybody's doing fashion. So it's like everybody's doing the same thing. So it's like you don't, if, you're, if you're trying to be, do something, be unique about it. If you're gonna be a chef, you gotta be a unique chef. You gotta be a unique makeup artist. You gotta be a unique fashion artist to get out of New York because everybody's doing the same thing. But you mentioned that Vegas is looking similar to New York. So what is it about Vegas that you like more or better than New York? The, I would say more so of the inspiration that everybody's getting out here. And everybody's like, they're seeing like, all right, I see you guys doing this. Let me gravitate and try to make it better. So I like, I like to see how things are growing, you know? I think I know what you mean, because I feel like living here, there's a lot of, if, if you got that energy and you're putting it out there and someone thinks it's cool, instead of hating, they'll be like, yo, that's dope. Let's work together, because I'm about that too. And it's more so about working together like me i'm a person like if you come to me you ask me questions i'm open book like how however you want to do it my, my other chef always told me like i'm gonna give you guys this recipe uh and you know you have the same recipe you have the same recipe but the dish is not going to come out the same at the end of the point so you know i'm always here to help out you know everybody's gonna be like how did you do that well i'll talk to me we could talk about it I'm glad that you moved here and you got that spirit of looking to help others out. And I'm curious, how did you know about the Vegas cannabis community before you actually moved here? I, that I just stumbled onto. <laughs> That's something I stumbled onto. Like, I have my other partner here. She uh, got the access of the cannabis union. So the Kanishev Union, yes. with so she knows Brooksy Hustle, the creator of the Kanishev Union, and the Sesh. Yes. So she got in contact with Brooksy, and also that's my partner too. So I'll I'll mention her uh, Instagram at the end of the interview. But she put me on to Brooksy, and she was like, you know, please get in contact. Let's uh. <laughs> let's see what's going on on this side, you know. And it's it's amazing because. What we got in store, we're going to show you guys a lot of stuff that, you know, maybe might not be, you know, usual thing on the cannabis table that you guys will do. Yes, let's get into it because you mentioned how everybody's doing the same thing in New York and you got to come original with something unique. Tell us about the products that you're creating. So the products I'm creating and bringing out is more so like stuff that you love to see. So like I was explaining someone like, when you go to the mall, the first thing you smell is a Cinnabon, you know? 
Like the first thing you smell in the mall is a Cinnabon. So we recreated a Cinnabon, an edible infused Cinnabon. So a lot of people see that, they're like, what, it's infused? And I'm like, yes, from the dough to the icing to the chocolate ganache. So, so you're getting a good treat in one thoroughly faded. Yes, you're gonna get faded. <laughs> Do you have a favorite product or is that your favorite product? My favorite product I love to make is the Oreo cookie. So basically, that's a, it's a cookie dough that's already infused, and we cover that on the top of a, a regular Oreo. And we bake that, and it's like once you, once you break it open, you like see the Oreo in the middle of the cookie. So it's an infused cookie with an Oreo inside. Yes. And why is that your favorite, just that process of the secret being inside? Yes. I just love, I just love pe watching people open it and be like, oh, there's another cookie inside. A cookie within a cookie. Yes. <laughs> Especially when you're high, that would mess you up. You've been here for only a month, right? Yes. What has been your proudest accomplishment since moving here? So last week, I was, we was kind of like slow picking up because we're, you know, fresh new here. And last week, I was just like, you know, I haven't seen Rasta Pasta on anybody's menu out here. What is it called? Rasta Pasta. Rasta Pasta. I'm not familiar with that. <laughs> so basically, it's a Jamaican dish, which is like a sort of like a pasta dish with a cream sauce. It has a little bit of jerk spice into it, and then you add anything from like jerk shrimp, jerk chicken, or oxtails. So I did the Rasta Pasta shrimp last week. And I put it out on Instagram and like literally sold out. Yeah! So literally sold out. So I was like, okay. Do you have roots in Jamaica? No, I'm actually Haitian. Okay. Well, thank you for teaching me about the Rasta pasta and I'm gonna have to get a plate from you. Yes. So, you know, coming from New York, like I said, we're a melting pot. We're a mixing pot. We have a lot of cultures in New York. You know, growing up in Queens, we got a Haitian community, we got Jamaican community, we got Guyanese community, you know, you got the, you got people from Guyanese that's like Guy, um, Caribbean, and then you got the Desi side, which is like more Hindu. So it's like a lot of people, and then we got Spanish people, we got Italians, Arabs, Middle Eastern, like everybody's in New York. So it's just like how Vegas is where I just moved into Chinatown, so I'm like, oh, this is just like New York. Like everything is accessible to me. Like I go to the supermarket, I could find a uh, rice wrap to make spring rolls. So it's like, this is great. Like I'm not, I'm not really homesick. I'm, I could adapt. So I'm good. <laughs> I'm glad that you feel so at home in Vegas and you see such, I'm glad that all the things you see similar in New York is positive. Cause I know you left there cause you're getting tired of it. And I'm glad you're here as well because the city is so, as they say, young and new, but we get our chance to come up with the city and make our mark on it. And tell us, how long have you been cooking? Just a period. I've been cooking since 1998. And I started when, you know, I wasn't such of the greatest kid. So I went to Job Corps and I got my culinary degree from Job Corps. And from then, I was cooking on and off, but didn't really take it serious to like around, I would say 2007 is when I actually took it serious. And then I just started working with like different chefs in New York until I landed like a good culinary job in Brooklyn. And it was like one of the best jobs I ever had in my life. Like, I mean, we was, we was catering and it was like, my chef, he took like the chance of his lifetime to train me because he could have been like, man, you don't know what you're doing. And I'm like, you know, I got a little something, something. But he's like, you're not like top, top. But he took that chance. And we was doing parties from like Vogue, Kanye Ness. We was doing Facebook parties, Instagram parties. Like, and I mean, these are like the board parties, like corporate parties. So, you know, we was in the mix. 
and and we're just making like you know little hors d'oeuvres and everybody's like oh you know who made this and then my chef would just throw me in the water in the fire like oh he did that and i'm like but you helped me bro like i didn't do this by myself like you helped me but he's always putting me in the spotlight so i was like that's what's up you know like he he built my confidence up like that to where it's like all right now i could cook in front of anybody you know like so i appreciated that that he did that for me and so now i'm like gonna do that for others out here in vegas yeah yeah respect and when did you start putting cannabis in your food? Um, when I started putting cannabis in my food, it was when we was at an event one time and one of the like top executives at the party, he like pulled me to the side and he was like, yo, you wanna smoke a joint? And I'm like, what? I'm, not, I'm working right now, like I can't do this. And he's like, don't worry about it, like I'm, I own this. I'm like, okay. So, you know, I tell my boss, cause I'm like, I'm not gonna like, I'm like, bro, he wants me to go smoke. He's like, go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Do what you got to do. Like, that's the, that's the guy who owns this place. So, you know, once I started, you know, seeing that, then I started, like, I went home that night. Then I watched Bong Appetit. I'm like, what is this? I said, they're cooking with food? So I'm like, I'm like oh, wow, they're cooking with cannabis? Oh, man. So I could do this. And it's like... When I seen it, all it was was just one component added into my recipes. So it's like I learned in culinary, we learned how to infuse oil, regular cooking oil. Like I could make lavender oil and we could cook with that, you know, and we could infuse that. Like we could make thyme oil and have the oil have the thyme flavor and everything like that. So we learned how to do that. And once I was like, oh, so let me, with, and this is like before I even bought a magic butter machine and anything like that. So I'm like, so if the temperature of this, and this is herb, and I'm already using herb as lavender, and I already know how to like, you know, uh, before we decarb um, weed, we had to um, dehydrate lavender before we could, you know, infuse the lavender in regular oil. We would dehydrate in the oven let it, you know, get its flavor. Very similar to weed, getting weed ready. Let it get its flavor and everything like that. And then you start infusing it at 180 temperature on the stove. And it's like, oh, this is very similar to weed. Why didn't I think of this, like, you know, years ago? When that boss got you high, that's what happened. So, you know, then after that, it was just like, okay, I went on my free time, after I finished work, I just, you know, start, you know, infusing like butters and stuff like that. Then, you know, we're always cooking. So it's like, oh, let me just take what I did at work and just infuse it. So I would just do that and then bring it back to my boss. And my boss is like, this got weed in it. I'm like, yeah. He's like, yo, don't do this at work. <laughs> He's like, don't do this. Don't take this to the job when we have clients and stuff like that. I'm like, no, nah, I'm not going to do that. He's like, you can use the kitchen, but. <laughs> Don't, don't, don't give this to the clients, yeah. So, you know, I respected that. And after that, I was like, I'm taking this serious. So, you know, I gave my boss, you know, a little notice, like, I'm really about to take this serious. Cause when I seen another chef, I forgot his name, but he did private dinners in New York where the dinners were infused, five course meals. He infused all the dinners. You pay a sum of like, I think $300 for the ticket. And with the dinner, you get, there's a bong rip, a little bowl, and there's like an edible next to the dinner. And then it tells you like what the food was infused with. And then also you get to smoke what you're eating because the bowl is right next to the plate. So it was like, that's an experience I've always wanted to do. And I'm like, you know, trying to get other chefs to come together because it, it wasn't just him. It wasn't just him by himself. I know he had like a nice little team. So, you know, trying to get a couple of chefs together, we could do this. You know, let's do private dinners and stuff like that. Let's have, you know, little private dinners where we have conversations and, you know, just enjoy life and let's talk about cannabis and let's talk about how it's more so for wellness and less recreation. You know, we could enjoy it for recreational purposes, but once we get down to wellness and what it does to 
for the body and everything like that, that's when you want to change the path and be like, all right, I want to take it really serious. Well, I'm glad you had that experience that led to your epiphany and ultimately led to you coming here to Vegas. All right, Chef Marv, let everybody know how they can connect with you online. Okay, so everybody could connect with me at CDNYC Treats underscore, and then they also could connect my partner at Stinkies, that's S T I N K Y Z 718. Word, come on through. Make sure you get some of that Rasta pasta and connect with Chef Marvin. Uh, tell me you made the right decision to come to Vegas. Peace.